The squad residing at the center of the political universe spoke to CBS's Gail King about their place in the national debate. What we are are four women who have an alignment of values, shared policy priorities. There is no insurgency here. There's nothing conspiratorial. There is no insurgency. There is no insurgency and there's nothing conspiratorial. What we are are four lawmakers who happen to land in the same place on the same issue time and time again. California Democratic Congresswoman Barbara Lee joins me now. Congresswoman, thank you very much for being with us. Where did this, how did this all erupt? Uh, how did these four women become so demonized by the President of the United States? First, Andrew, let me just say this. I am appalled at this President's racist, demeaning, disgusting, and dangerous attacks. Women, African-American women, women of color, are just as American as he is. We are fighting each and every day for a more perfect union. And Andrea, let me just say to the president, we are here to stay and we're going to continue to fight to make sure that there's justice and that there's equality and that there's parity and there's equal opportunity for everyone in this country. That includes new Americans and people of color. Now, I want to ask you about what happened last night on the floor uh, and your reaction to what happened with Emmanuel Cleaver. I think he was presiding at the moment, so let me play part of that and ask you about it on the other side. I came in here to, to try to do this in a fair way. I kept warning both sides, let's not do this, hoping we could get through. But we don't ever, ever want to pass up, it seems, an opportunity to, ex to escalate. And that's what this is. I dare anybody to look at any of the footage and see if there was any unfairness. But unfairness is not enough because we want to just fight. I abandon the chair. That was during the debate, of course, over the resolution uh, uh, condemning the president's racist comments. What was so upsetting to Congressman Cleaver? Well, he said it all. He wanted a fair fight. And when you look at the resolution, which we were debating, the resolution very clearly says that this House of Representatives is not going to legitimize fear and hatred and racism. We're not going to let that be normalized. And the president's comments, quite frankly, are leading to that. And so he was presiding and he said enough is enough. And let me tell you, Andrea, this is outrageous because if, if the notion that the president's attacks were not racist, were not dangerous, were not bigoted, were not demeaning. You tell me what is. And what about this impeachment resolution? Uh, it's unclear what's going to happen today. Uh, Congressman Al Green, the articles of impeachment. What is the strategy there? Is that going to die in committee? I'm not sure what the strategy is right now, but of course, uh, if it comes to the floor, many of us uh, would vote for it. But let me just say, Andrea, I just have to say one thing. We have passed 50 bills or more here in the House of Representatives. We passed lowering prescription drugs for uh, our country. We passed many, many bills that would require uh, people to, <coughs> excuse me, make sure that uh, our dreamers are protected. We passed legislation uh, to get rid of corruption in the government and get money out of politics. We're doing our job. We passed the Violence Against Women Act. And so, you know, it doesn't make any sense for uh, this president, and I want to cite his tweet earlier when he said that we weren't doing our job. We are doing our job, and I'm encouraging you, Andrea, and people who are listening, to tell Mitch McConnell and the Senate to pass the legislation that we forwarded to them so that the president can sign them and get it get going with the agenda of this country this is a total distraction 